Hello, I'm the Beauty Professor, and you can find my beauty blog at www.beautyprofessor.net. I had mentioned on my blog a couple of times that IMATS LA was approaching rapidly, and I'm happy to say that this last weekend I attended. And I was there to cover it as a member of the press for my blog, so today's video is an overview of the items that I purchased while I was there. I certainly also took a copious amount of pictures and I'll be compiling a comprehensive overview post for the blog, but this is the video component that will give you an up-close view of each of the beauty items that I decided to get while I was at IMATS. So a quick word on IMATS for those who might not be familiar. IMATS is an acronym that stands for the International Makeup Artists Trade Show, and it takes place in many major cities of the world, chiefly New York, London, Vancouver, Sydney, Toronto, and Los Angeles. This trade show showcases makeup lines, both large and small, that cater to the makeup artist industry, but certainly there is something for every beauty lover like I am. I don't purport to be a makeup artist, but certainly as a beauty lover and beauty blogger, there are many lines at this show that I'm always excited about seeing in person. The products from each line are available for purchase, and this is a great chance to get to meet people who are closely associated with each of these beauty lines and learn more about the brand. At IMATS there are also a myriad of demonstrations done by famed makeup artists who are there to showcase their skill. And there's also a high concentration of special effects makeup going on. And it's just a feast for the eyes and certainly a place for every beauty lover to go at least once. The first booth that I stopped at upon entering onto the convention floor was that of Face Atelier, and this is a Canadian beauty line that I'm familiar with because I have ordered products, chiefly foundation, from this line in the past. I was super excited to see that all the product offerings are out there, so I was able to do some swatching and exploring of certain products that I haven't yet added to my collection, especially lip products. And I also was privileged to be able to meet the Face Atelier creator, Debbie Bondar, who told me so many interesting things about her line and about her beauty aesthetic, which is all about just naturally beautiful, undetectable makeup on the face, and I can definitely appreciate that because I strive for that just as a person myself. In terms of the products that I picked up at Face Atelier, one was yet another foundation. Now, I picked up the Pro Ultra Foundation in wheat. I already own it in ivory and in sand, and ivory is like my palest winter color. Sand is definitely more appropriate for me in the summer when I have some color, and wheat is kind of somewhere in the middle. It's a great neutral light beige. This foundation I've done videos on before, and certainly I'll do a close-up swatching of ivory, now wheat, and sand in a future blog post, but I will say that it's just a beautiful natural skin finish, medium coverage, appropriate for HD cameras. It just is is lovely in terms of the skin-like finish it creates. Some other Face Atelier products that I picked up are, one is the Ultra Matte, and Debbie was talking to me about why she created this. This is an alternative to powder, and she said you can spray it on before you apply your foundation to create a matte canvas that will help the foundation to adhere better, and you can also use it throughout the day to remove unwanted shine. Now, I haven't tried this yet, and I can't wait to do so. When I do, I'll certainly weigh in on it in another video and blog post. This is the Ultra Matte, and I plan on decanting it into a couple smaller spray bottles so that I can keep it in my purse for on-the-go moments. Another product from the Face line that I left with was the Face Atelier Facade. And this is a really interesting gel product. This is in the shade Arabesque, and it's kind of a muted coral meets red. I'll see if I can swatch it for you here. This is intended to be a lip and a cheek product. It's super silky, it's translucent, 
and it's buildable and there's multiple shades in this and the shades can be mixed together. Another face product I picked up, in this case it was in triplicate, was their lip glaze. And I picked it up in three colors, Enigma, Cameo, and Pixie. And just with an initial description, Enigma is a very creamy, pale beige white, and it brings lightness to the lips, but it can also be worn alone for just a sheer wash of milky beige color. And the Cameo is a, as Debbie mentioned, kind of like your quintessential J.Lo nude shiny lip. And I've been loving wearing this alone and also over lip colors. I tried it out today. It's a creamy kind of nude pink beige and it's neither too light as to wash out the face nor is it too dark as to become a, a color of its own rather than a muted lip. And then there's Pixie which is a warm pale baby pink and it's just kind of a milky pink. The pigmentation in all three of these glosses is tremendous and it's not sticky. It's long wearing, it stays in the lip line, and I can't wait to do a close-up blog post on these three shades. This shade is called Cool Coral, and it's a slightly frosty coral pink that's light, it's muted, and it just looks beautiful on the lips. It's not too light, but it's certainly not a dark, bold coral. She says this is a shade that everybody can wear. It's great for all skin tones, and I believe that to be true. It's just a really versatile, beautiful coral lip color. Finally, I got a sneak peek of the Face Atelier's latest product, which is the Ultra Skin. Now this is just in a sample jar, and I can't wait to do a trial run with this on my face. Here it is in shade number three. This Ultra Skin is a creamy foundation, unlike the liquid Ultra Pro Foundation. The Ultra Skin is meant to be a very thin veil of pigmented color on the face that has kind of a creamy, almost tinted moisturizer effect, but without the excessive creaminess of a tinted moisturizer. It's more just like a, a seamless veil on top of the skin that just blends in so nicely. This is a, a beautiful yellow based light to light medium beige shade and she told me that this will be released in the springtime and I feel super privileged to be able to sample this particular product in the meanwhile. So more on this soon for all you face atelier lovers out there. The next line I went to go visit was that of Ket Cosmetics and Ket is a professional grade, in many cases foundation, makeup line, but they also have many other products that cover the full spectrum of facial needs. Very interested in seeing the Fix Cream Makeup up close and personal. I know I have an absolute illness, this intense penchant for foundations. I can't help myself and I went straight to this when I saw it. Now this shade is zero or O3 should I say, and in this case I think the O stands for the typical golden ochre or okra color. And the cream foundations are in three color families. You've got the yellow based O's, the neutral ends, and then there's a rosy like pink undertoned set of shades as well. I tend to be mostly yellow and, th and this is the second lightest color in the O range which is perfect for my NC 23 to 25 skin. Here it is swatched on my fingertip and the Ket expert at the booth that I was speaking to told me that, and here it is here on my wrist, he told me that this foundation can be applied in a host of ways. You can use your fingers, you can use a brush, you can use a damp sponge, and that it is intended to create a high definition, skin-like finish, which is what we're all going for, and that it's waterproof. So if you were to tap it over any other existing makeup, it would water make that makeup waterproof. Now I've yet to try this because I just got it, but I am wearing this today just to give it a trial run. I'm just wearing this over my Peau Vierge primer from Le Mettier de Beauté, and 
I just sponged it in with a beauty blender this morning and it's actually lasted all day. There's been a lot of humidity today at the beach. So I'm really excited to play around with the Fix Cream makeup some more, but my first impressions are I'm pretty impressed with how long lasting it is and how much it looks like real skin on the face. Another product that I picked up while I was there was that of the Veil Illuminating Complexion Fix for Face and Eyes. And this Veil line specializes in one single product and it's this Complexion Fix. And the Complexion Fix is intended, and I spoke directly with its creator, Sebastian Tardif, who was so delightful to speak with and he told me all about what this particular product does. I found that my best match was Light 2N which is a neutral, but it does lean yellow, light beige. And you can see that it comes in a brush tip applicator, kind of like the Touche Clot from YSL. But there's a lot more coverage than something like that product might offer. Here's just one brushing of it on the, my wrist here, and hopefully it's picking up the opacity. It's just a very interesting, versatile product. I have heard that people like to use this as an all-over foundation, just in areas where they need it. I've yet to try that but I can't wait to explore its benefits. In the meanwhile, I am wearing it under my eyes as a light concealer, and it does stay put. I didn't have any kind of migration or pooling over the course of the day, and it's really portable, so it's nice to throw in your makeup bag for touch-ups as the day goes on. One of the other booths is called Nymi's Beauty Supply, and it carries a host of different lines, some of them more difficult to find in regular stores than others, one of those lines that I always like to make sure I take a peek at is that of Lise Watier. And this time around, I picked up an eye product and a lip product. The eye product is the Ombre Souffle Supreme, and I've actually reviewed this formula on my blog maybe about a year ago. I have a silver shade. This is called Taupe Fantasia, and it is a glowing, light taupe shade. Hopefully you can see that there and certainly when I review it close up I'll have pictures of it in various lighting situations. It is the Rouge Fondant Supreme lip color and in this case it's in the shade Brigitte which looks like this. Now this is a really really pale almost clear color but it does have some pale pink tones and some shimmer but the fondant lip color is intended to be an ultra cushiony, hydrating lip treatment. I knew this was going to be a pale, very kind of my lips, not even my lips, but better, but just my lips, <laughs> because it is basically clear with just a little bit of shine. But I love the texture, the smell is kind of fruity in the best possible kind of grown up way. And it is just a joy to apply, it feels really great on the lips. Next, I did a little stop at the NYX booth, and, and NYX is a line that you can get for a very reasonable cost at many beauty retailers. Ulta is a great place to pick up NYX, but I don't know, there was something about seeing all of this NYX in one place, and it really was an insurmountable amount of NYX products, more than I knew that I ever even made, all together, and I just couldn't help myself. I did look and leave with a few items. Probably all three were under $10 in total, which is a steal. And I truly think I'll use all of these. The first was the Hot Singles Eyeshadow in J'adore, which is a sparkly, bronzy taupe. And it does have really good pigmentation for what was a $3 eyeshadow. Wow. And I am wearing it on my lids right now. Truly, I didn't wear this over primer. I haven't touched it up. I just did a single or a couple layers of color but as a single wash of color and no creasing, no migrating, no fading. I could not be more pleased. What a steal. Also I picked up two lipsticks in colors of which I already own so many but I could not help myself. Actually this one shade here it's called Power. It's number 629 and this is their round lipstick. That's what it's called. This is not always easy to find at Ulta. So that's why I looked at this formula first. Once again, $3. But Power is a very creamy, pigmented, lavender mauve pink. And here it is, just like, that's a quick swatch. You can see it's leaving behind a lot of pigmentation. On the lips, it's beautiful. It reminds me of a lighter version of MAC Up The Amp, which is a personal favorite. I love purple tones. 
Um, it's not as dark as that, and so it becomes infinitely more wearable just with one pass. I do suspect this will bounce around on my purse for quite a while because it's just a versatile color and fairly unique formula-wise because it's a cream, not a shimmer, and shade-wise. The other shade I picked up, not as unique but still interesting, was 537A, which is called Gala. And it's a creamy baby pink. You can see it swatched below. I thought it was going to pull a little more nude slash peach because that's what it looks like in the tube. In swatches, it's coming out more of like a cotton candy pink. But it'll be an interesting shade to try wearing on its own. Certainly, you can wear it to lighten up anything that might be too dark. So that was my $10 spent at the NYX booth. Completely well worth it. I did get a single brush at the Hakuhodo booth. It's almost overwhelming, especially for somebody who can basically use the same brush for as many things as she can get away with, which I am entirely guilty of. I wanted to leave with one special brush, and I realized that I've been using my same three or four Sephora eyeshadow brushes, but the particular brush that I love, it's the purple one that I've used in many videos, has been discontinued, so I thought maybe I would start there. In this case, I picked up this brush, which is made of squirrel hair, and it's a tapered, very soft eyeshadow brush. I'm looking forward to using this for blending and specifically cream shadows by Terry Ombre Black Stars, blending it all together as I like to do. And this is just a beautiful brush to give that a go with. I'm excited that I finally was able to add something from Hakuhodo to my collection and it's nice to think about this being the commemorative piece. The last line that I ended up leaving with some products from was that of Besame and this is a line that I have bought products from gosh probably for seven or eight years. It is obviously an independent brand and it embraces a vintage retro vibe. The creator, Gabriela Hernandez, was there in person. I was able to take a great picture, and I'll include that in my blog post. But she embraces this notion of kind of old-time beauty, classically, tastefully executed, beautiful products. I just left with two, but there were so many more I was considering. One was the Souffle Foundation, and it comes in a little frosted glass jar. This is the shade Honey, which is a neutral to yellow based light beige and I used the souffle foundation in the past the first round when it was created and I had it in a couple of different colors that I had to mix to get a perfect shade for me but I loved the texture back then it was extremely natural beautiful cream finish and it lasted for the whole day unfortunately at that point in time it was very scented and it didn't agree with the allergies that I have this new incarnation of the souffle foundation has no fragrance no parabens they've added additional skincare benefits and it's just a beautifully creamy very pigmented foundation formula finally the last product i'll be talking about today was the besame lipstick in debutante pink it comes in this little velvet case this Lipstick Bullet is just to die for. It's so pretty, so unique, and the contents isn't bad either. It's a very interesting lilac tinged light pink. Really, I don't think I have any dupes for this in my current massive lip color collection. It looks like that. And so it's not a pale pink, it's just kind of a light pink. And it does have a slightly purple or lilac leaning. I ended up liking this so much I picked one up as a gift for somebody as well and I can't wait to send it to them because they're not expecting it. So the Best May line, very interesting retro vintage beauty just executed in a tasteful and lovely sophisticated way. That's the extent of my IMAX haul. I certainly plan on devoting specific blog posts to all of these products. I've already taken my preliminary round of photos of each so that I can write about them as I test them. 
And I hope you enjoyed a glimpse into the products that I was drawn to purchasing while I was there. IMATS was such a wonderful weekend. I had a great time there with my blog assistant, Laura, and we met so many interesting, fascinating, talented people. From makeup artists like Satya Linak, who works with the Surat line as well as being an amazing freelance talent, to makeup line creators who are equally as passionate about makeup as the beauty lovers who buy it, to fellow bloggers like Crystal from Beauty by Crystal, who I feel like I know because we communicate online all the time, and Naomi from lovetoprimp.org. We're friends as well and we run into each other. It was just such a fun time to be in a large open space with endless beauty products and a whole bunch of people who are passionate about said products. So thankful that I was able to document the experience there and I invite you to take a peek at my entire blog post, which of course will include a wealth of photos from the weekend. As always, I welcome your questions and your comments, and please don't forget to visit me at my beauty blog, Beauty Professor, which can be found at www.beautyprofessor.net. Take care.